Hello, I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs, and this is Bogey, my 10 pound toy poodle who just won't leave me alone. Um, I'm so excited to be here tonight, and I have a helper with me. She's going to read comments and questions, so that'll make it a little bit easier for me. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, this is the first time I've ever uh, done um, the marathon for Roy Cycle, and I'm super excited to be a part of this. Um, I have, I'm a retailer for Dixie Bell Paints and a retailer for uh, Roy Cycle Treasures and for um, Witch Bend. And um, I have two. Uh, shop locations. One is in Phoenix at the Phoenix Brass Armadillo. And then I have another location up in the mountains, um, up in the White Mountains, as a matter of fact, and they are white right now, um, in Heber and Overgard. So if any of my peeps are watching, say hello. Um, and let's see, what else can I tell you about myself? Um, well, I think that's it. So tell me who you are and where you're watching from and uh, if you guys have ever done any decoupaging before because decoupage is my really honestly favorite thing to do. And I'm a really lucky person because I get to wake up every morning and ask myself, what am I gonna create today? And I'm really excited about this project. Um, and I'm, I, I just, I always have something fun going on. Yes, so, you do. <laughs> so I see there's a few people on tonight. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or comments so far? Everyone's saying hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hello. Well, let's get this show on the road because I got a lot to cover. So I started, um, I'm going to move this down and I'm going to let you okay. move it down, but I'll get it started down here. You have your phone the other way last time. I think I was able to see. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Well, it's a good thing you got yours then. I can see you on my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, so what we're working on tonight is I picked up these really cool wooden benches uh, at the Goodwill up in Prescott. And... The funny thing is, is I dated a guy for about a week and he had these benches at his house and he had just moved into a house and he was trying to decide if he was going to keep them or not. And I really wanted them. Um, but that whole little relationship lasted about a week or a week and a half. So I didn't get the benches, but I was up in Prescott and I found these benches um, up there at the Goodwill and snatched them up. And I was super excited about it. And I hadn't decided what I was going to do with them. I knew I was going to decoupage them, but I hadn't really thought it through. So this is what I've done. I did partial, this one's decoupaged. So let me move it over here. And hopefully you can see this. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, that's good. Do you have it up on your phone yet? No. Oh, okay. I think I have an old an old video. Okay, let me see if I can pull this up on here. Just hang with us, folks. I have you, but you're doing you're not the same. Oh well it's always slower. Okay. okay, so just watch it on okay. here. Okay, perfect. And then I think you should have comments. Oh, well, it's always slower. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And then you can tell where to Yes, move. thank you. Okay, so this one, I decoupaged the top, and I'm using this tissue that's called African Star. And I really love this tissue, and I'm really sad to say, people, that this one is one of them that's been um, not discontinued, but retired, I guess is the right word for it. 
And so I do still have quite a few of them left in inventory. So if anybody uh, falls in love with this and they want it, it is available on my website. Um, and I know that the people in front of me tonight, they were uh, demoing on some of the new designs, but I was late getting my order in, and so it hasn't arrived yet. And um, I'm cut off at the neck. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm. This is the tissue design that I had planned on using to begin with, so that works out really well. Okay, so back, back down. <laughs> Your phone was flipped to me last time, so I could see you. Well, let me see. Yeah, so I don't know if I can. Why I'm, this is delayed, so I can't see you, but your phone was live, and I can't okay. see you. Okay, can you see me now? No. It, last time your phone was flipped where I could see you and no. <laughs> okay. Curse me. Okay. Now. Perfect. Okay. Yes, now we right. got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, are you down here on, on the bench? Perfect. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm on the bench. All right. We'll see if we can get this show on the road, people. Okay. <clears throat> so I have decoupaged the bench, and I'm going to take you step by step on this one. But I just wanted you to see what the plan is. Um, I have torn the paper around the edges so it has uh, an uneven edge to it. And then I'm doing the iron on method, so this one has been ironed on. When we get finished decoupaging this one, I'm gonna come back to this one and apply the black wax on it. So that's why I wanted to have one ready to go. So we'll move that out of the way and scoot this one over. And I'll tell you what the process has been so far, because I've done some prep because I didn't want you to, can you hand me that one so I can Absolutely. see? Absolutely. Um, I didn't want you to have to watch me paint and then have, have to watch paint dry. So I tried to prep some of this ahead of time. So this was originally, like this one and it's rough and some it has you know it's used so it's got some scratches and nicks and things in it and it was this color and because of the color on the tissue I wanted a background color painted on here that was going to work well with the back of this so that they were complementary to each other. But because I'm doing black wax around the edges, I wanted a darker brown. So here I put um, Dixie Belle Coffee Bean, which is a dark brown color around the edges here. And then I have put two very generous coats of Gator Hide which is Dixie Belle top coat. And you can do your um, decoupage with any Dix Dixie Belle top coat. Um, but my rule is, however you're going to finish it, that's the top coat you wanna use throughout the whole process. So you can use the flat top coat or the clear or the gloss or the um, satin or the gator hide. You can use any of those, but whatever you start with, that's what you want to finish with. And because I want this to be water repellent so that it can, you know, it's a stool. So if it gets spilled on or food on it or a drink on it, it can be wiped off and any liquid is going to, um, um, you know, beat up is the word I'm trying to come up with. So that's why I'm using Gator Hide. And I put two generous coats of it on here and around the edges and then let it dry really well. So the next step is to take the tissue and this, by the way, the other bench is done with the other portion of this tissue. 
All of these tissues are 18 pound paper, which is really an amazing and easy weight to work with. And they come in sheets of 20 by 30 inches. So like the gal was saying earlier, hers was a little bigger than she needed for her project. Um, don't ever get rid of your scraps because you can always use these scraps for another project. And so the next step here is to grab my scissors. Okay, so I'm going to just guesstimate how much I want because I don't want it going all the way down to the bottom because I want that wax, I want to have the torn edge and I want some of the wax to show on it. And then on this side, the same thing. So I'm just going to guesstimate where I'm going to cut here. At this moment, it's not critical. It's not a critical measurement. And then I'm going to take an artist brush and I'm going to wet those edges. I'm going to kind of estimate where I want all my pieces to be. And just kind of fold it in there a little bit. And that looks pretty perfect. So I'm just going to take my artist brush and I'm going to just paint a random line, it's not a straight line. And you guys have probably seen this technique before, but if you haven't, it's a really cool thing to know. Um, is the camera close enough on this for them to yes, see? Okay, yes, yes. Got a little echo going on. A little delayed reaction. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty appropriate for me. <laughs> okay, so now that it's wet, it tears easily and pulls. And the cool part about this is it's very random. It's not um, a straight line. And that's exactly how I want it to be. People love the paper. Oh, good. I really like this paper, too, and I was really sad that it's um, being retired. And actually, I'm really sad about all of them being retired. I think they should hang around forever, just like me. So, Diana Searcy, painter Burton, she says, I'm standing here doing the same thing. Oh, somebody else knew this <laughs> trick but it's a pretty cool trick it's much more attractive to me than um, when you just take scissors and cut a straight line it's more organic it's more artsy fartsy I almost did something with that paper I, I like how it was sort of rustic yeah, I'd like to know who decides. Is that you, Royce? <laughs> you the <laughs> one that decides what gets retired and what doesn't? Or is that, you know, by sales? What is the criteria for that? Inquiring minds want to know. But I'm sure, you know, like I said, I have quite a bit of it because I, I bought it a lot because I really like it. Um, but I'm sure there are other retailers that might have some as well. So um, check the retailer 
in your area. And if not, then you can go on my website and get some from me if you happen to like this pattern. Yeah, one question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who just asked it, but they wanted to know how do they know if it's been retired? Um, well, if it's no longer on the website um, at Roy Cycle Treasure, then you know it's gone. So I don't know if the general public gets to know ahead of time when things are being retired. The retailers know ahead of time. Um, but I know that once things are retired, they come completely off the website. And was this called African Star? Yes. Okay. We had a question. Sandra Lee Britton wanted to know. It is. And Judy Brady, she wants to know what your website is. My website is at the top of my up the top of the page. But um, just to answer your question, um, it is Deborah Booper designs.com and Booker is spelled B-U-C-H-E-R so it's Deborah D-E-B-O-R-A-H Booker designs.com thank you no thank you okay so can you guys see how random and organic this edge is yeah it looks like you can actually <laughs> and I really, really like that. So the next step is that, because I told you I had already put two very generous coats of, um, I need to plug in my iron. I had everything right where I needed it. You know, I kind of rearranged things. And Roy Cycle Treasure said they decide on the retired based on sales. Uh-huh, I figured. And they have to make room for new designs. Well, Roy, can't we just have them forever? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Okay, you guys, so have you ever seen a little baby iron like this? No, it's cute. <laughs> is, it, is it fair? You got I it. I have it in? Okay. So I have my big iron out, but this little craft iron comes in really handy, and it heats up, heats up hot enough that you don't want to touch it, but not too hard, hot that you'd get a serious burn, but you don't want your kids playing with it. If you've got a little daughter, she's going to think it's like a Barbie doll iron, and it is not a toy to play with. Um, but this is really great for decoupaging, and when you want to get into small areas or in drawers and dressers and stuff, it's a really cute little iron to use. And you can get them at Hobby Lobby, and I always have to ask what aisle they're on because there isn't a toy craft iron section, so it's not in a section that you ever go looking for it in, but they do have them. And they're about, I want to say they're about $10, about that range, but if you use your 40% coupon, which are, I heard a rumor saying that Hobby Lobby's doing away with their 40% coupons, so if you want one of these, run into Hobby Lobby and get it. You can also order them on the Hobby Lobby uh, website. But I'm, I've got my paper down here in the position that I want it, and um, I'm going to put my uh, parchment paper on top. And I'm going to start by bending over these edges and making a nice crease on them. 
And this is one of those times that having um, a little iron comes in really handy because I did get out the big one and try it on this and it was so heavy to hold on to and for doing these corners and edges was just awkward. So then I broke out the baby iron. And so I'm using the transfer paper between um, the tissue and the iron because what is happening here is the iron, the heat of the iron is reactivating the medium that I put on as like the glue. Um, and so in this case, it's the gator hide getting reactivated and liquefied by the heat of the iron. And that's what is going to give us the adhesion. And another reason why the big iron didn't work so great on this project is, I don't know if you noticed, but this, this is, it's like a sway back, like a saddle in it. And the big iron just doesn't go across here. It's too big and it doesn't go down into that um, valley very well where this little iron does. But the little iron takes a little bit more muscle you know, like pressure pushing down um, and isn't heated as hot as the big iron gets. And so it, it's a little slower process of getting this to iron on. So just be thankful that you didn't have to watch paint dry and you can just watch me iron paper now. So while we're ironing paper, are there any other questions? Carmilla, Carmelina, she wanted to know what you were applying to the edge of the paper. To the edge of the paper? But I believe that was when it was water. So oh, you can create okay. a soft edge. Okay. Yeah. But you can see how that edge is adhering itself and ironing down now. I think it looks really pretty on that um, coffee bean brown. And this one, this one that I'm working on right now, I um, stained earlier today with uh, Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain. And I used the color Espresso on it, which I hadn't ever used before. I'm usually more in the mind of using Walnut, but I wanted a darker um, color. I didn't want black, but I wanted a darker color on this because of the dark in the design. And... Um, I just, and because mm -hmm. I'm going to use black wax on it, so I just thought going darker would be pretty. And that espresso is really pretty. And this is painted in the espresso, or stained, not painted. But I left this middle piece unstained so that you could see what the original color was and what the espresso looks like. Sonia Hansen, she would like to know, do you only use parchment paper or can you use a mat like you use in sewing for pressing adhesive back to interfacing or appliques? Um, well, I've only ever used parchment paper, so I don't really know anything about a mat. Um, you know, you can pick up the parchment paper at the, at the Dollar Tree um, for a dollar. So... Um, it's not it's not an expensive thing to have on hand it's good to have it in your craft craft area and if an iron Leanne Ziegel she has a baby iron but it has three levels of heat mm -hmm. she's not sure what level of heat to use I'd start off with the medium and see how it goes now um, 
I have my big iron out here and I'll, I'll get it out and show you how that works. And I think it's still plugged in. Cotton's too hot and wool, I think, is just about right. And the big iron does make this process go faster as far as heat goes. You can see how that has adhered down really well, but I don't know if you can see that there are areas here that haven't yet. And one of the advantages to doing it this way with the iron on method is you really get a pretty much wrinkle free um, finished product. I mean, there it's not a hundred percent wrinkle free, but pretty darn near. Um, well, that other iron is heating up. I'll show you this one. I did this one last week. Pretty. And this is just a wood tray. And I painted it in drop cloth so that it would match the background on the tissue. And then I centered it on here and I did the same method that I showed you with the water around the edges to um, pull off my size. And then I positioned it and I had two coats of gator hide on here and put the tissue paper on it and then did the same iron on. And this little iron worked really great on here. It's been a little harder to get it to adhere on here, and I, I don't really know why it's been a little bit more difficult to get it to adhere. But if you live here in the local area, uh, in the Phoenix metropolitan area, I am offering a class for this tray. You can pick out any tissue paper that you want for the class. And, um, and the paint is provided, the tissue, the wooden tray, the handles, everything is provided. The class is $45 and it's held at uh, Art on Fire in Peoria, which is a really, really cool art facility. And they do all kinds of classes and really cool things there. And um, the class is on April 10th, and the time is 11 to about 3 p.m. ish, so that nobody's rushed for it. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can go to my website and sign up for it. It is limited in seating, so if you're interested, I'd suggest you go pretty quick. Um, anyway, this is a super fun class. And it's the same pr process. This is the iron-on process, and you can see there's virtually no wrinkles in this. And such a pretty design. Another one of Royce's designs. She does the best. The quality of her tissues and the designs of her tissues, you just can't beat them. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this is set on wool. And it's just cumbersome, but I think it's a little bit hotter and it might speed things up a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but this is like um, cocktail time for me. And, you know, I don't think you would appreciate me teaching if I was having a glass of wine because I'd get really creative or leave out essential information. So. <laughs> or a little loopy. <laughs> yeah. So next time I think I need to sign up for a little bit earlier. <laughs> or later could be fun after you've <laughs> had your cocktail. <laughs> It could be uh, something to talk about. Okay, so that heated it up a little bit, and I'm just going to put some more elbow grease. I'm going to take it off the cart. Move. You don't have to move. I'll move. Okay. It back. That 
way I can put a little bit more muscle into it. Okay, can you still see? decide whether I wanted to do all four of these benches with the same tissue design or just do two benches with the same and two benches with a different design. And I don't know if people would want to buy all four of them or if people would just buy one or if they would buy them in pairs. What do you guys think? Do you have any thoughts or opinions on that? I will let you know when someone answers okay. you. Well, it's a serious question, you guys. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been pondering it for a couple of days. Because if you think they all need to match, then I need to be sure I get the other two done. But if you don't think they all need to match, then I'll move on to my next project. Well, we're getting uh, comments either two by two, mm -hmm. Kim Rogers, and Leanne Ziegel. Yes, all four the same. Okay. And Pam Miller, she said, I think it would be cool with grunge as well. Uh -huh. I agree. I love the orange papers. And Deborah and Steer, same. So all four the same seems to be the consensus. Okay. Ah, oh, well, we got pairs. Stacy Davis says pairs. Oh, now Barbara Despecker Novi, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right. Four different patterns. I love mixing up patterns. Mm -hmm. I do too. I don't know if you guys saw this post. Um, I know it was on uh, Roy Cycle Treasure a couple of weeks ago, and somebody did nesting tables. And they actually did use this tissue, um, and they used the grain stack, and I can't remember what the third tissue was, but each table had a different design, and then they used the black wax on them as well, and oh my gosh, I really loved that, that idea, that design. In fact, I've been on the hunt for some nesting tables ever since I saw that. And I kind of thought the same thing with this, that, you know, that's kind of the same idea. I have those nesting tables saved oh, in my... Can you get uh, it on camera and show them? Whoa, yes, let me find it. In my galleries, it seems like I screenshot everything these days. Yeah, I think we all do. There's so many talented artists out there. You're one of them. <laughs> I try. <laughs> okay, so because this is saddleback on here, there it is. It actually has to give somewhere. Yep, that's them. You want to? Let me. Let me. Yeah, go just ahead. Explain this, and then you can stick that sure. in the camera. But. Um, it's not important that you see it, but it tears itself because of the sway in here. And, you know, that's not anything to be upset about because all of this edge is a rough edge. And when I go over with the black wax on it, that just adds more texture and interest to it. So I just wanted to point that out. You know, if you're working on a piece uh, that has a sway in it or um, isn't quite symmetrical and that happens, go with it. Don't get freaked out. 
It's only our people. So here's those nesting trays, if you want to okay. just... We gotta give can... a shout out. Oh, it shows. Yes, okay. very Am good. I in a good place? Yes, I can make it there. So, of course, these are all Roy cycle tissues. We gotta give a shout out to Everyday Treasures. She's yes. the one that did that. The artist. Yes, that's the artist. So and there I you think, go. I think it's a really beautiful combination. It is. And once I saw that, I thought this would also be a cool idea on these um, bar stools. So, you know, that's why I keep toying around. What should I do? Well, now I have two of them exactly the same, but I could pick out another design and do the other two. So they're still compatible. Deborah Bancroft, are the sheets you are using cut up from a larger sheet? Yes. Okay. All of the tissues come in um, the same size. They're all 18 pound tissue, which is easy and amazing to work with. And uh, each tissue is 30 by 20 in size, which on um, these two benches I still had some left over after I covered both of these bench pieces and you never want to get rid of your scraps I mean just um, last Sunday night Royce did a really neat collage piece with nothing but scraps I never throw them away either I have a nice see-through cl plastic box that I keep all of them in. Okay, I love how that just lays over the edge like that. We got that one in. Need to work on that corner a little bit. Is there a trick on your website uh, for choosing shipping? Judy Brady said she's on your website and it's only allowing her store pickup. Um, you, can, you can choose to have it shipped or you can choose to have store pickup. You have to select it. Okay. It's usually right there on wherever you're ordering from. Um, I live in Surprise, Arizona, and so a lot of people right. opt to um, just do front porch pickup, especially since COVID. Um, so there's that option, or I deliver, I don't deliver, I ship out to anywhere in the US. And for those people who wanna know about uh, Canada and Europe, I am looking into it. I don't see any reason why I couldn't send tissues out to those places, I just need to get shipping costs for it but and I do ship same day or next day and I ship uh, priority so it doesn't matter where you're at you will get your order pretty darn fast some people tuned in a little later so they want to know what product is under the tissue um, I use Gator High which is Dixie Bell's toughest top coat and the reason it's the toughest is because um, it's water resistant and because these stools could have potentially have food or drinks spilled on them um, I wanted to be sure that I had a top coat on here that was going to hold up to that um, and they could also just be used as a side table where somebody would just set a drink on it. And so I wanted to be sure I had it as well protected as I possibly can. Um, and so that's why I chose that. But I did explain that, you know, you can use any of the Pixie Bell top coats. You can use the flat or the semi-gloss or the high-gloss. You can use any of the top or the satin, 
But whatever you start your project with is what you want to end it with. You don't want to mix the two, you know, like put a flat on the bottom and a satin on the top. Um, whatever you start with, you want to use it through the whole project. We got another question. Uh -huh. Gozia Mazur. She wants to know, can you decoupage on a stone tabletop? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe somebody else um, that's tuned in and watching, or maybe if Royce is still on, maybe she can answer that question. I've never done that. this iron on process is you do get a nice smooth finish on it but as soon as I finish smoothing it out here then I'm going to put another coat of gator hide on it and it's going to wrinkle it all up again just saying <laughs> enjoying this marathon? Have you watched um, the other two presenters that were on before me? They both did a great job. And I think it was their first time, <clears throat> I think it was the first time for both of them on the marathon, just like it is for me. adhesion is down really good because like I said when I go to put the gator hide on again um, it's going to wrinkle up again and I want this one down really well because when the second one dries it will it will flatten back out. That's the really cool thing about paper is it is it has an elastic elasticity to it and it will stretch when it's wet but it will shrink back to its original size when it dries. Okay, we're almost there. There's just a few places here that I just want to get one more time. Hi, Melissa Upton. Oh, <laughs> Melissa, my sweet friend. She said, good evening, girls. <laughs> good evening. I've been missing you. You've been on my mind, my heart, my thoughts, my prayers. Hmm, Judy still says, I did select shipping, but at checkout it says store pickup. I don't know. We'll see. I might have to. I'll get back with you, Judy, okay? When we're done with I'll this? go on her website okay. and see, and we'll talk her through it. Leanne Ziegel, would the African star pair well with dreams of flight? Oh, I think so, yeah. I think so. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but there's a loose spot right here where it still lifts up. 
-hmm. which means I have not done a good job of reactivating the um, top coat on there. So as soon as I get that done, we're going to go to the next step. So aren't you guys glad you didn't have to watch paint dry tonight? <laughs> which is very important. It's not an option with a little craft iron. You can't add water to it. But if you're using your home iron, make sure there is no water, no steam coming out. It needs to be a dry iron or you'll ruin your piece. You don't want to add moisture to it. Is the gator hide on top of the decoupage paper? Not yet. Right now it was two uh, liberal coats that had dried underneath it. But the next step right now is, I got a couple more spots here. The next step is to actually put gator hide on the top. And the gator hide is going to put a protective sealant on it so that, you know, if anybody sets a glass down with any condensation on it, or sets a glass of wine on it, or spills their dinner on it that they're sitting here eating, um, it's protected. And that's why I chose to use the gator hide. If it was something that would never come in contact with food or liquid, you wouldn't have to um, use the gator hide. You could use it in any medium. But I chose that because I want it protected. So here comes the scary part. Are we still in good focus here? Yes, we okay. look good. So here's the gator hide. Is it backwards? Nope. Oh, it actually is correct? Well, I can see it correct. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't see it in the camera. I, I see it. Oh, it is correct. Yes. Boy, I don't know. <laughs> Facebook is always changing things up and I can never keep up with them. I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. So we have a question from Debbie Feeky. Uh, so if it wrinkles up again, do you iron again? You can. Okay. Yes, absolutely. In fact, most times I do. If you're patient and walk away, as the gal was saying in the previous episode, and let it just do its thing, and dry and shrink back down and settle back down, most of your wrinkles will go away. If you've done a good job of adhering it the first time, most of them will go away. But if you come back to it and you've still got a few problem areas that you're not happy about, just get your iron, get your parchment paper, and um, iron it back down. Because what it will do is reactivate the gator hide and adhere it back down again. So, as long as you have your parchment paper, you're good. Okay, so this is the painful part because I just worked so hard to get all the wrinkles out on here. But I needed to get it adhered well and stretched so when it shrinks back down, it shrinks down properly. So, you want to use kind of a feathery touch and put it on smooth. Um, you don't want to overwork it because 
you know, if you overwork it or if you're too uh, rambunctious with it, you could actually tear your paper. And we don't want to do that at this stage of the game. Yvonne Lundine, on average, how long does a project of this size take? Um, well, because I had chosen to uh, stain it and, you know, chose to repaint the top of it and around the edges, it's, it's taking me, it's a process and is probably a total of maybe three or four hours per stool. Not all projects, you know, require this much, but um, I have a personality flaw that if I can make things complicated, I always will. I seldom do things the easy way and when I'm coming up with class projects for people, I have to work really hard at not making them overly complicated, uh, making them easy for people to learn from. So that's just my own flaw. And Lisa Tarbert, I've never used the iron-on method. This is all new to me. Can someone explain this to me? Thank you. Sure. Now, I should mention, um, anytime you buy uh, a tissue from me, I include with every sale iron-on instructions. They're printed out and they're included with every sale. And I also believe on Royal, Royal Cycles Treasure page, she has them available to you. Um, the iron-on and then the regular decoupage method. But just to review what we've done is I painted the background underneath with a color that was complementary to the background on this tissue and let that dry. And then I put two coats of gator hide or whatever top coat you want to use um, liberal so that there's enough of it on there to reactivate so that was the next step then I measured my tissue and cut it to the size and like I wanted these uh, raw edges on it so I tore the tissue to fit how I wanted it to be then I used the parchment paper and an iron to adhere all of this. And when we were done with that, then I've applied another top coat on it. And like I said, um, whatever top coat you start with, that's what you want to use throughout the whole project. Okay, so this is pretty wet, and I don't know if you are close enough. It doesn't really show it bubbling, so let's let's move the camera down mm -hmm. so that you can see that it is bubbling. Can you see the bubbles in there? I can. Okay. Yes. I'll okay. try to move it down a little more. There we go. Yeah, that there you can see the bubbles and the and the wrinkles. And so this is when you just wanna say, okay, I'm done. Wash your brushes and pour Walk yourself away. a glass of wine <laughs> and go sit down on the couch <laughs> and leave it. And then tomorrow morning, it will have shrunk back down. It will be dry. And then if there's any problem areas, just get your decoupage or your uh, parchment paper and your iron and just give it one last iron. As long as you have that parchment paper between your decoupage paper and your iron, 
you're good. You don't want to put your hot iron down on top of this because you're going to liquefy it and then you're going to gum up your iron and maybe scorch your piece. I don't know. Okay, so this piece we just have to say is done for tonight. Yay! <laughs> but let me see how Good job. Doing, how we're doing on time. Uh, we have five uh, minutes left. Ah. So I won't get this done, but I can show you what needs to happen with it. So. Um, okay. So, because I'm a Dixie Belle retailer, of course the product that I use is Dixie Belle, and I absolutely love everything about Dixie Belle. And not just because I sell it, that's the reason I sell it, is because I love it so much. Um, and you are so helpful. Oh, thank you. I love what I do. So, um, the wax, all of Dixie Belle's wax is called Best Dang Wax, and that's because it is the best dang wax. And um, it comes in several different colors, but it's water-based, so you can actually add paint pigment to it if, if you want to use the white and change a color or make a customized color. And I use the same old chip brush, I just keep it in a plastic bag and so I'm just going to brush it on these edges and because this has a top coat under it um, and I use these big giant wet wipes that I get at Sam's Club these are great I'll just rip one in half and so you can put it on and take back leave on as much as you want and take off as much as you want and I'm going to do that all around this torn edge to kind of blend it from this dark coffee bean that I painted on here and you know I can bring it up here on the edge of the stool and darken it up a little bit. A good example of this is on this piece. I took brown wax and went all around these edges. It's very subtle, but it gives it that warm, old, antique look. Oh yeah. With the wax around the edges. And that's exactly what I'm doing on here. It's just giving it that old, worn, like this has been around in the family. I've seen a lot of Super Bowl games. So it's a family heirloom. And you know, if you put on too much, just take your wet wipe and wipe it back off. If you take off too much, just put it back on again. And then when I'm done with the wax, I just stick my brush and the wax in a Ziploc bag so it's I don't wash this out and it's ready to use the next time. Easy peasy. And I think we're just about there. So does anybody have any last questions? I would appreciate it if you go to my Facebook page and like it. And, um, you know, anytime you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. I always respond. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. It seems like our time went by super fast. And Royce, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I really appreciate it. So you guys have a great evening. And if anybody has any questions, please let me know. And happy decoupaging. Good night. Bye. Okay. Yes.